up, Leo? It's currently Thursday night, May 30th. Or I guess it's Friday now. And uh, here are my thoughts on art. So what draws me to art is that unlike all these other things like design, say, or math or engineering, there's no objective right or wrong. Um, with design, it's very specific. You know, I could go and say, hey, this is actually bad design. And the same thing with user experience or whatnot. It's some, some things you can just say, this is not very good. Whereas with art, because I personally define art as something that helps us see through the eyes of the creator, there's no wrong answer. So say if a homeless person decided to put a pile of garbage and put it out on the street and say, this is my art, who am I to say that it's not? And it's regardless of if it's good or not, or if it's pleasing to your eyes or not, as long as it helps me see through the whoever made it and understand how they view the world, then I think it's art. Similar with avant-garde stuff, you know, sometimes it's a lot of the gore or like a lot of highly sexual artworks. You know, you may not necessarily agree with it, but it is someone created it and like there's a lot of thought that went behind it. Or even if it wasn't, that says something about the artwork, right? But the person that made it. So that's what attracts me to art. And funny enough, how I got really into it is um, starting from college. I never really was trained in art or never studied art. And I was always more along the line of uh, like engineering. But in college, I, I kind of switched majors to product design. And product design at my school was kind of a subset of mechanical engineering and uh, art. And so we were required to take two art classes, art one and art two. So I believe this is sophomore uh, year when I was required to take these art classes. And we had all these assignments and art critiques. And I would always just do them, you know, last minute. Sometimes it's the day up. We would get like a week to do something. I'd just do it like three hours before showing up to class. And like, I didn't really think much of it. I just did it. But then in these critiques, they were all like, oh, there's, there must be a lot of meaning behind this stuff. Or like, oh, I could see how this line that you made is crooked and it represents something. And I was just, I thought it was just full of bullshit. So I thought it was also hilarious. The fact that I could make all this stuff up, pull it, basically just like, you know, pull it out of nowhere and people would come up with these meanings. And because of that, because I found that funny, I started kind of making satire art. And um, that's something that I've always enjoyed doing, satire, making fun of things. And so I started making anti-art is what I called it, to make fun of art. And it started in school just around campus. I remember one of the first pieces that I did was, you know, at the time when I didn't know much about art, the one thing that you kind of do know is these Campbell soup cans and Andy Warhol. And so I took that and I made uh, my school version of it. So uh, at my school, there's this thing called the Stanford Duck Syndrome. And it's when from the outside, everyone looks fine, but inside you're all really paddling hard. So it, it means to say that there's a lot of people that are struggling, they just don't show it because you know there's nice weather and whatnot. So I decided to make these Stanford uh, duck soup cans. And so I took the, initial, the original um, soup cans and you know how there's like multiple versions of them, variations. Uh, I created different variations of the duck soup. So it was like hard, like blood boiling duck soup, brain fried, deep brain fried duck soup. So it was all about like how strong students struggle. And I printed out a bunch of them and uh, installed them in some hallway. And I think it got taken down just pretty recently after I did it, but I enjoyed it. And soon enough, ironically, I found myself doing more of it and ironically kept I started referring to what I'm doing as art itself, and I kind of dropped the anti, anti-art after a while. Um, and then when I moved to New York, things just ramped up a little bit more and being more inspired with all these great artists, uh, you know, originated from New York and there's just so much creativity. And I was also, you know, just, I had dropped out. I, I didn't quite finish school. I just left and came to New York with like, I put everything in three suitcases and came over here with one-way ticket. And from here on, it was just inspiring. And I started going to more museums and particularly uh, MoMA was a big thing for me. So uh, right that over time, I started just uh, getting more into art and especially street art. And I wanted to do everything anonymously initially. So since then, um, I also 
By the way, I do all my artwork under a different name, actually. It's not even an alter ego, but I, it's just a separate character entirely that I try to live under. His name is Sebastian Park, and that I also got the idea in New York, and this must have been like 2015. Um, the idea came about when I, uh, when I was in the midst of getting all into all this art stuff and wanting to create, I wanted almost a separate identity because my existing Jack identity had always been tied with, you know, just a nice good kid at school. I did well, got good grades, went to high school. And I kind of wanted, I had this, I guess, rebellious side and wanting to just like fuck a lot of shit up. I don't know. Um, and it just didn't fit the existing character I had, I guess, or image. And one day I was really high on caffeine. I'm really sensitive to caffeine and it just snapped, I got an idea. I was like, you know, all these street artists basically use the city as a canvas and painters use canvas as a canvas. Why can't I basically make a human, per like a character as a canvas, a blank canvas onto which I can paint whatever I want onto. And then I just thought more about it and I was like, you know, nothing's stopping me from doing that. It's not like illegal or anything. I can just do whatever I want. So then I came up with this identity alter you know, separate character identity, and I created separate Facebook accounts for it. I remember that was one of the first things I did, the Facebook account, Instagram account, and the whole goal was I wanted to live a life that I never had. I kind of grew up sheltered and, like, I guess, yeah, religious and all that. And I've always kind of, I wouldn't say envied, but I've always looked at other people that grew up in a different background, you know, more artsy people. And I was like, you know, what, I wonder what it's like to be one of those people. And I finally got a chance to live that. So I never told anyone about it. None of, my, even none of my closest friends knew about it. All the Instagram accounts were separate. And I really just started living life as that character. Whenever I would go out, um, I would sometimes just uh, embody that character. And the first thing that I did was I took my glasses off. And I said, Sebastian does not wear glasses. And uh, I started introducing myself as, as Sebastian and made a separate set of friends under that. And you know, no one really had any idea. It was, and I didn't want it to be connected. So uh, I also started making art that way. But only recently, I would say in the last year or so, I started getting a lot more into painting. And that is part of a larger dilemma that I've always had. But uh, because of this background, you know, the main line of work that I do, and the biggest passion that I still have is business. And, you know, yeah, just business. So I have this constant struggle of do I do, am I more so of a practical business person or am I more of a free spirited artist? And it's been, that's been a bigger issue for me, this kind of conflict internally. And recently I decided to move more towards the artist side because with business, I always have these really grand ideas and I want to make a lot of products. And uh, I can't stick with one thing for a very long time. And this has been the biggest, it's been kind of the, the death of me for the long, longest time. And even when I meet investors or other co-founders, their biggest worry is that I wouldn't finish what I start and just like move on to the next idea. And I know myself more than anyone else. And I know that is kind of, I used to treat it as a problem, but over time I kind of learned, I guess, yeah, I learned to embrace it. And now I think it's one of the greatest strengths, or I treat it as one of the greatest strengths, being able to jump between different ideas and just crank out ideas, build them very quickly. So now I've shifted my model more towards, um, you know, working with partners and just delivering on my side and they deliver on their side. But regarding art, or because after that shift, I decided it's best to just embody more the artist and um, focus my life on creating. So this part of Part of it is this, you know, film itself that I'm creating, and I got to finally live the life where I I can spend all my time ideating and doing new things. I'm obsessed with the new. I don't really like I doing old things. So I always compare it to zero to one, and uh, yeah, like I, I enjoy the process of going from zero to one, not necessarily the one to ten. So if I could, I would just spend all day just making new things and working with really talented people to create new things. So that's where I'm at now.
Um, these paintings started around earlier this year, late last year. And um, my biggest inspirations are uh, pop artists from the 50s and 60s. So predominantly, Roy Lichtenstein is one of my favorite artists. And then I'm also a fan of Andy Warhol, especially after I saw his uh, retrospective at the Whitney recently and finding out that actually not a lot of people purchased his art during his career. Uh, he had a hard time selling them at galleries, and, but nevertheless, he still kept making them. That made me respect him a little bit more, or a lot more, I guess. Just the fact that regardless of what other people thought, he just kept creating. He was the creator. And I think that's the way I view my work too. I don't even, I haven't even tried selling them, but that's not the main purpose. And uh, I'm kind of make, trying to make all the money from the business side of things that I can pour it into more of the art stuff and the film stuff. It's, it's merely, uh, if I could, I would just uh, make stuff all day, create art all day. And I want to hold on to a lot of these paintings myself and just in my personal collection. And um, I just really enjoy them. And I create these paintings uh, with keeping in mind that they will be looked at 50, 60 years later on. And um, yeah, I'll just continue to do it. I have a lot of meaning or there's specific messages that I want to say within this, these artworks. Um,